Hello, welcome to ITT Talks. My name is Anastasia Lavrina, and today we have a special guest, member of Azerbaijani parliament, Tural Ganjaliev. Hello and welcome to our program. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you. This is your second participation in our program, and we are very happy to have you in our studio again. Um, I have several questions, but let's start with the most crucial one. This week, Azerbaijani President Ilham Aliyev participated as a guest in a meeting of the Supreme Eurasian Economic Council in, in Moscow. This is the first time when Azerbaijani leader is taking part in such an important event. And we should highlight that Azerbaijan is not a member of this uh, council, but still we sustain very good partnership collaboration with all member steps except of Armenia, but we know why. So what can you tell us about this? Why this is important for Azerbaijan and for the rest of the members of this council? Um, well, very interesting question. We are also following very closely the developments in our region and the president of Azerbaijan in these days uh, participating at the meetings in Moscow. He is going to meet President Putin and he is he will have he will have also meeting with the prime minister Pashinyan, and he is also participating in the meeting that you have mentioned in the session of this Eurasian Economic Council meeting. I think that Azerbaijan, uh, since uh, gaining our independence, Azerbaijan has always conducted uh, independent foreign policy, which is based on the national interests of our country, and of course the president of Azerbaijan is very experienced uh, politician the leader of his nation, leader of his country, he um, knows uh, how, to, uh, how to tackle the problems in our region which, with which uh, organizations or with which countries to build uh, very close relations. By the way, Azerbaijan has always uh, followed the politics that we would like to have very good neighborly relations with all the countries in the region, except of our Armenia, of course, you know, unfortunately, because of its territorial claims against Azerbaijan. But uh, uh, Azerbaijan, again, has very good relations with the Russian Federation, with Turkey, with Georgia, our immediate neighbors. Unfortunately, last, in last uh, uh, period of time, we had some tensions with Iran. But of course, I hope that we will be able to resolve all the issues through diplomatic means. But when it comes to the meetings in Moscow, I think that uh, Azerbaijan is acting solely on its uh, on the interests of the national, uh, on the on the interests of the national, in, on the base of the national interest, and of course, the president of Azerbaijan, as a sovereign of his nation, of his country, is doing his best in order to represent our country in regional global organizations. In this case, in Moscow, we do hope that uh, he will achieve positive, tangible results from his meetings. How will you characterize the position of Washington, Brussels, and Moscow? and the issues related to the peace building in the South Caucasus? Um, in my view, um, Azerbaijan, of course, uh, we would like to achieve a peace with Armenia. And in this case, it is not that important where we meet. Of course, all these tracks are important. Azerbaijan, uh, our leadership, uh, we have met Armenian officials in different capitals, in Brussels, in Washington, now in Moscow. The most important thing is to come to terms with Armenia that we are ready to sign a peace treaty. If, for example, uh, in Moscow, the parties will consider that there is a time, high time, that we uh, should sign a peace treaty, it would, it would be, of course, a great news for not only for Azerbaijan, also for Armenia. Because our nations have been waiting for this final just peace for many decades. So when we speak about long-term consequences, it doesn't matter where exactly in which country the peace treaty will be signed. I, I, I think that in this case, which party mediates um, uh, objectively, I think, I, I, I mean, if, for example, the party who is mediating uh, real, uh, negotiations between Azerbaijan and Armenia, if there is a sincere um, wish to help Armenia and Azerbaijan to sign a peace treaty, we must appreciate and we must use this opportunity. Again, the uh, venue is not that important. We have to focus more on the, on the uh, peace treaty itself. This is, first of all, the refraining from territorial claims against each other. In this case, unfortunately, we have seen Armenia uh, repeating, repeating its uh, wrong foreign policy, uh, claiming territorial uh, territories of its neighbors, uh, Azerbaijan, Georgia, uh, Turkey, and we do hope that Armenia 
uh, finally uh, uh, recognize Azerbaijan's territorial integrity as we do recognize Armenia's territorial integrity. If I'm not mistaken, in Brussels, uh, af after the meeting of two leaders from Azerbaijan and Armenia, uh, Charles Michel made a statement where he said that two leaders agreed to recognize the territorial integrity of each other in the frame of the achieved uh, agreements, agreements after yeah. Almighty Declaration from 1991. So uh, how mutual recognition of territorial integrity of both countries may help the process? Actually, there is a understanding and agreement that uh, Azerbaijan and Armenia, when we declared our independence from former Soviet Union, we had uh, clear borders of each country. And it is not we are not we have don't have to invent a new bicycle saying that you know uh, the territor territories that we live uh, must be changed or should be changed of course uh, azerbaijan has proposed uh, to armenia peace treaty which is based on the law, norms and principles of the international law five basic five principles. basic principles and of course armenia responded and there were some uh, according to the uh, media and official statements there were some uh, proposals for both from Armenia, by Armenia and by, by Azerbaijan. It is normal thing, it is natural thing that the parties are negotiating the details. But the most important thing is that Armenia and Azerbaijan should recognize their each other's territorial integrity. And you know there is a very important principle in international law, uti positetis juris. So when uh, in countries declare their independence, they must... Uh, uh, function, they must operate within the international recognized borders. In this case, we have clear cut principle, clear cut understanding where Armenia is and where Azerbaijan is. The most important problem, the barrier uh, between uh, Armenia and Azerbaijan, uh, I mean, uh, against this principle was Armenia's territorial claims, uh, 30 year of occupation, destruction. Now I do hope that uh, it will end and we will have an opportunity to sign peace treaty. It's very interesting to know the position of member of European Parliament, because when we see the meeting in, in Brussels, we know about the position of di different countries in, in Europe. For example, when it comes to France, there is still no one-side approach. Uh, it, it's mostly about uh, pro-Armenian position yes. of uh, French government, unfortunately. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, just recently you visited Strasbourg, where you had quite good meetings with uh, several members of European Parliament. So what are the key issues they're interested in when it comes to the region of the South Caucasus? Energy, economy, peace building. What exactly they are worried about? Um, basic question to, for the European Union is to have basic concern, is to have peace and stable uh, region in its immediate neighborhood, which is South Caucasus. But when we see the approach of different countries like France to the issue, to the question, it raises so many concerns uh, because France, uh, uh, by supporting Armenia, uh, is not interested in the peace because sometimes we see that Armenia uh, is being used and being manipulated by French government, by the current French uh, President Macron, and it doesn't help, of course. We have seen the consequences of this foreign policy where EU sent its mission to, to the Armenian border without even uh, receiving Azerbaijani uh, position, the government of Azerbaijan position and permission. It's not acceptable because we, if you are sending any mission to the South Caucasus, the most important, the biggest country in the South Caucasus is Azerbaijan, and you have to take into account its position vis-a-vis -vis the EU mission. So we are considering this kind of approach are not good, are not constructive. And we would like in, in our meeting with the European members of the European Parliament, we invite those people, those members of parliament who support the peace uh, building process to pay special attention to these issues. Because if we would like to achieve peace, we would like to uh, see final just peace treaty between Armenia and Azerbaijan, we have to be, we have to be very careful. So if you are bringing new element, uh, in this case by the European Union, we have to consider how much good it will uh, contribute. Is it going to contribute to the process or it's going to destroy the process? So that's why it's very important for the EU also uh, when they make steps to be very careful, to take into account all the difficult uh, position, situation in the development into account. So 
just to sum up what we already discussed, uh, mutual recognition of territorial integrity both countries are quite uh, important on this uh, step uh, of the process moving towards the peace deal. And another very important argument which was highlighted in Washington and Brussels, and I'm more than sure to be highlighted in Moscow too, it's uh, transport communication in the region. Uh, Moscow itself, several times high-level officials were saying that we are interested to see the transport communication development in the region between Armenia and Azerbaijan, referring also to the trilateral statement signed in November 2020 when Armenia uh, took a responsibility to, to open the connectivity on its own territory to make sure that Azerbaijan has a connection with Nakhichevan Autonomous Republic. Yes. So, um, as Pashinyan said, Prime Minister of Armenia just recently, I will cite it, he says that Armenia did not undertake to build new infrastructures, but is ready to consider these options. We know that opening communications need financial support and money. Yes. From this statement, we can understand that Armenia wants to show that we don't have money, then who will help, and if anyone is ready to help Armenia, Russia? You know, uh, according to the trilateral statement signed in uh, Russia, uh, 10 November 2020, all the obligations, all the uh, um, details are there. So Azerbaijan has implemented its own part, but Armenia unfortunately never implemented, never complied with the obligations that it took uh, on it uh, three years ago. So it's also concerning the opening of all transport and communication links, which means that Zengezur corridor must be opened and Azerbaijani Nakhchivan region must be connected with the uh, remaining part of Azerbaijan. But when Pashinyan or any Armenian official says that we uh, we don't have enough financial funds to uh, build the infrastructure uh, for this purpose, Frankly speaking, uh, it is uh, if we are talking about the obligation overall. It first of all, it, uh, Armenia must agree uh, and must sign in a peace treaty that we are ready to uh, provide communication transport link to Azerbaijan, open the Zengezur corridor, and I think that after this, uh, to find uh, appropriate funds will not be very difficult. You know, uh, Azerbaijan is uh, the richest country in the South Caucasus. Our partners, um, I mean. If we would like to develop regional cooperation, there will be so many inputs from different uh, uh, parties, and I don't think I don't think that Armenia here must be very cautious, must must be very you know hesitating where we will get some funds. The most important thing is to agree that Zengezur corridor will be opening and will be operating, and after this, I, I am sure that it there will be enough funds to help Armenia uh, to to build this corridor and there will be no problem in terms of finance, uh, financial side to get of the this financial yes. support. Yes. Well, what's also interesting, um, uh, Nikol Pashinyan added that Armenia's position is based on the fact that all these roads should operate under the sovereignty of the countries through which they pass. Yes. That means they want to keep sovereignty over the transport corridor which will pass through the territory of Armenia. Okay, we can understand this. We also... Uh, saying that we are, uh, we have to have a sovereignty over the Lachin Road, which is passing through the territory of Azerbaijan, and that's, that's quite logical. Uh, but if Armenia cannot cover the expenses and mm -hmm. someone from outside will do that, maybe Russia, because railways of Russia has enough uh, activity in Armenia, or Washington or Brussels, who also want to have yes. control over that, that means Armenia again is selling its sovereignty. Yes, you know, this is in this case, the question of sovereignty is not that uh, relevant because when we are talking about the opening of transport and communication links, it means that we have to build up, um, you know, uh, trust between our nations. So, for example, for two more than two years, we have allowed Armenians to use, and now we are allowing Armenians to use Lachin Road without any hindrance, without any obstacles. Um, does it mean that, uh, uh, of course, the sovereignty of the Lachin Road belongs to Azerbaijan? But it doesn't mean that we are restricting it or we are uh, creating any problems. It, it's the same for Armenia. If, for example, tomorrow the Zengezur Corridor, if it will be operational, it will be opened, 
it doesn't mean that the sovereignty of Armenia, Armenia will get rid of its sovereignty or Armenia will be prevented from its sovereignty in, 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 in this case. The most important thing is to open the corridor is to help both nations to get uh, connected, you know, trade, economy, regional cooperation. We have to think in these terms, how we can help our nations, the South Caucasus, to become even prosperous, to open up communication transport links. If we will, if we will argue that, you know, this uh, or corridor, Zengezur corridor will deprive anyone, Armenia or whatever it is, from its sovereignty, we will not go, we will not follow, we will not be able to go in the right direction. We have to think in terms of economy, we have to think in terms of prosperity, regional cooperation is most important in this case. So mutual recognition of sovereignty yes. of both countries and opening of transport communication between two states may help to bring us closer to the final peace deal between Armenia and Azerbaijan. Absolutely. Uh, as Lachin Road is functioning without any problem, I think that Zengezur corridor will, will also be the same. Uh, Azerbaijan has to connect with its Nakhchivan region through Zengezur corridor. And in this case, we will have uh, durable, just peace and understanding of the opening of all transportation links is in the interest of all parties. It's in the interest of Armenia, Azerbaijan, Russia, I mean, Turkey, every country in the region are interested in the opening of this Zengezur corridor, transport and communication links, and we uh, have to contribute by our actions, by the policy conducted by our nations in order to help this uh, I hope this road to be operational as soon as possible. Mr. Ganjali, thank you. Thank you so much for joining ITC Talks. My pleasure. Thank, thank you. you.